Hello there, today we're going to look at the DL300 charge controller. Um, now this is typically supplied with LE300 and LEV150 wind turbines. It's a basic charge controller which integrates a dump load and also a pulse width modulation charging circuit into a nice stout metal enclosure. Um, typically this will be used on standalone installations where you simply have a wind turbine charging a, a battery bank. If you are using some more advanced charging techniques or maybe you're using solar as well and maybe some other charging sources like diesel or hydro, I recommend that you use a TriStar controller and a separate dump load. The TriStar is slightly more expensive but it offers you much more flexibility in configuring the system. So today we're going to take a look at this unit here. So the first thing when unpackaging the unit is it's approximately 300 millimeters long and this would usually be mounted onto a control panel um, maybe in the engine bay of your yacht or on a control panel next to the batteries depending on the type of off-grid system that you're, look, you're looking at. And the first thing we need to do is very simply remove the cover and there are two screws uh, with a flat blade screwdriver needed to remove them one at that end and then another at the opposite end. So I'll just quickly unscrew those to remove the cover so with both of the fixing screws removed, the upper cover simply slides off the top there. And that reveals to us a number of things. Um, firstly, we see the big green resistor. That's actually the dump load and that will get warm and even hot whilst the controller is burning off excess energy that cannot be absorbed by the batteries. And then in the lower half of the controller, we have the circuit board, which is basically the brains of the controller, which decides how much power needs to be dumped into the resistor. It's always looking at the battery voltage and when it thinks the battery voltage has reached its fully charged point it will begin to bleed excess power into the resistor. And it will do that um, in a tapered way so it won't just dump full 300 watts of power. Um, it may One second it may look at the batteries and start dumping 50 watts and if the battery still continues to rise in voltage it will very quickly dump more power and then it will dump less power, depend, completely depending on what the, what's happening with the batteries and what is happening with the wind turbine. Also supplied is a small plastic bag with a small plastic jumper in there and we'll, we're going to use that in a moment to configure the charge controller. At this point we do need to refer to the user manual because we need to see what type of battery system we're charging and which jumper position we need to put on the circuit board here. Now, as this is a basic charge controller, it only has two settings really. One is a generic set of voltage regulation points for gel batteries, and the other setting is for flooded lead acid batteries. So, remove, carefully removing the jumper from the packet, there are four pins here, and we're going to place the jumper upon the correct set of pins depending on our battery configuration. So in this particular short-term demonstration system we're just going to quickly set up, we're going to be using a flooded battery. Um, now when you're using flooded batteries you need to apply the plastic jumper to pins 2.2 on the circuit board and that is just just about there and I'm going to push that on. I would refer to the user manual where there's a very clear photograph of where the jumper should be positioned. If you're using gel batteries, we don't apply any jumper at all, so we can take that off, and we just leave the pins bare, and that tells the charge controller that it's connected to gel batteries, and it's to use a slightly different charging regu regulation system. So at this point, as I said before, we're using flooded batteries, so we'll pop that on pins 2.2. Now, at this point, we can begin to think about connecting the power to the charge controller. There are some knockout positions on either side of the charge controller and that will allow a cable gland or a grommet to be fitted once that, that panel has been knocked out. And that prevents your cable from becoming scuffed and chafed upon the, the metal edge there. So it's always good practice to use a cable gland or a grommet if you possibly can. In this case we won't do that because this is a very simple setup. Basically speaking, we have two terminals on the circuit board here. 
one that's labelled V+, plus, which is the positive connection, and one that is labelled V-, minus, which is the negative connection. Now, the turbine is not connected at all to this charge controller. That's not how this works. This charge controller is, you should think of it really as an overflow for your batteries, an electrical overflow for your batteries. So this charge controller is connected directly to the batteries and then the wind turbine is connected directly to the batteries also. So I've prepared some cables earlier, a red cable for the positive. And I'll put some ring crimps on here. Make sure you use the correct size. I won't do these up particularly tight as it's just a demonstration. And then the negative cable connects to that section of the circuit board. Now you do need to be careful when you tighten these up with spanners and sockets you don't over tighten these fixings otherwise you can damage the circuit board and one other thing to bear in mind is these cables would usually come out of the cable gland hole through the, the grommet or the cable gland that we fitted there but in this case we're simply just running the cables out of the bottom there. Just to do that up. And also notice that I've connected the cables to the charge controller first. So usually, if this was a permanent installation, we would be using a fuse or a circuit breaker, which is suitably rated in the positive line between the battery and the charge controller. And that's simply a, uh, it's a good thing to do. It's good electrical practice to do that, and it prevents the cables from melting or becoming damaged due to overcurrent. In this case, because it's just a demonstration, I'm literally gonna connect this up quite quickly. So I'm connecting the positive cable from the, positive terminal of the DL300 to the positive terminal of the battery and I'm going to do the same thing with the negative terminal when you're using batteries obviously be very careful using tools around battery terminals you don't want to short them out otherwise there will be a big spark and uh, the tool that's actually causing the short circuit will probably melt and possibly do you harm so now I've connected that up, it's actually powered up the controller um, and you can possibly see there that there's a green LED, a very tiny green LED right at the tip of my finger, it's just lit up. Now here the green LED is on solid but it may be in your case that the LED is flashing or blinking at a different frequency or a different rate of flash. That's fine and that's to be expected. The flashing of the green LED simply means it, well, it simply tells you what stage in the charge control algorithm the controller thinks it's at. So here it's at a particular stage. It, as the turbine charges the battery, you may see that flashing at different rates, and that's perfectly normal. Right next to the green LED is actually a very tiny red LED that is not illuminated at the moment. The only time that red LED should be illuminated is when the charge controller is actually dumping excess power into the resistor. So during the operation of your LE300 wind turbine you may periodically see the red light come on. That's nothing to worry about, it simply means that power is being dumped and you may even feel some heat coming off, off the resistor. Essentially that completes the installation of the DL300. Now we come to connect the wind turbine and it's very straightforward in that the positive output from the wind turbine actually goes straight to the positive terminal of the battery and the negative output wire of the wind turbine goes straight to the negative terminal of the battery. Now it may be that you have a run stop switch in this cable in between and that's fine but essentially you still got the positive going to positive and negative going to negative. What you should not do is connect the positive of the wind turbine to any of the terminals in the charge controller. In all circumstances, really, you need to make sure the turbine goes to the battery terminals to avoid any problems with the system.